Glad you can join us now. Let's uh, look at the continuous depreciation of the Naira as the Bureau of the Shan of Righteous continue to sell the dollar at a premium price in the black market, maintaining it over 300 Naira difference when compared to the rate in the official market. On Wednesday, November the 2nd, Naira closed at an average of 820 Naira to 1 US dollars from 800 Naira recorded the previous trading session. While well, the Naira has recorded significant losses against the U.S. dollar since last week after the central bank announced its plan to redesign the currency, the exchange rate has depreciated by 55 Naira since the date of the announcement. While many market operators are confused by the volatility and uncertainty in the Nigerian foreign exchange market, as operators in the market aware that the exchange rate constantly changes as demand increases. All right, let's uh, get talking now. Mr. Steve Okafo is the MD, uh, Kofana Securities and Investment. He joins us now. Always a pleasure to have you. Frank, it's nice to have you. It's all you guys. All the time. Yes. Uh, let, let me throw this question to you straight away. How bothered are you uh, looking at um, the fact that the Naira has crashed from around 450 uh, you, uh, Naira uh, earlier in the first quarter to 800 Naira in the black market. Frank, I'm, I'm, I'm bothered. I'm bothered not, um, I'm not even looking at the current rate. I'm bothered because I don't see any solution. I don't see CBN um, taking the right step to cover what is happening. I'm bothered because you see, Frank, mm. you when 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 there is a scarcity of an item, if a commodity, if um, um, uh, um, uh, a financial instrument, when there is a scarcity, what you expect is chaotic setting of the price. Exchange rate is the price we pay for foreign currency. There is a scarcity. If the regulatory authority CPN and not meet the demand. Open with speculation. Open with the fact that people are around treating the foreign exchange. Frank, I don't see an end to it. And Frank, I must be honest with you, if care is not taken, we're going to look at one thousand naira to a dollar before the end of this month. Frank, I'm about that. Mm. So uh, are you saying that we're not about to see an end to this crisis yet? Uh, that means the worst which we expect the worst to come. That's what you're saying. Yes, man, because you see, let me honestly see, CBS, let me, let me also play the devil's advocate here. CBS knows what to do, but they are not prepared to do it. And I have said it severally. It's not, see, Frank, <coughs> if you are opportune to get $1 million from, from CBN and the official rates, Frank, even you, no matter how sincere you are, you have you are running you are running a factory, you are running a, uh, a firm, you are into a you are into one town production of the car, and you get it at four hundred and fifty million. Black market is eight hundred and twenty. Frank, would you be tempted to sell half of it at the black market? Too? Mm. Let's look at, because um, you talked about the fact that the CBN knows exactly what to do, uh, but it looks as if they are not, you know, doing this. Is CBN um, a complete, an accomplice with this, or is it a, a sort of a, a, a conspiracy theory, a kind of, or will I say, a, 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 a conspiracy? <laughs> I, well, I do not know how to put the question right now. But when you say CBN knows exactly what to do and they are not doing it, uh, what does that suggest, really? <laughs> you, you, you see, I'm looking at it from the angle that the, the, the governor of CBN has a name to protect. Okay. The governor of CBN knows that it's too kind to him at the end of his tenor if the Naira continues to depreciate the way it is doing. I'm looking at it from the angle that the CBN was a group of the MD of any bank, a renowned banker. And I'm, I'm, and I'm wondering, I, you should know what to do. But the problem is that, look, even those in CBN, even 
even the staff of CBN, they have benefiting from this course. I'm not, it's just like he said, it's a constraint to kill but Frank, if you have a name to protect and you are faced with a difficult situation, you must look for a way to solve it. Especially if something is not particularly true at uh, way out of your professional lineage. But unfortunately, as it stands, I have said it, minus the professional and the black market groups. Make the black market free. You read for everybody, government officer, everybody, thank you. Mm. Well, now, let's quickly look at this. Let me come in quickly. Um, I mean, there are those who are saying, look, uh, yes, the CBN, even though the CBN knows what it's doing, like you said um, earlier, that you know, they know what to do, but it looks like they are not, um, you know, um, they are relaxed about what they are supposed to do. But again, uh, the CBN has also said they've been intervening uh, to recover, or will I say to strengthen uh, Naira with their interventions and of course the mop up uh, in the market in the treasury bills and, and all of that you have that G again uh, there is also another side to this story which is speculations um, yes, yes. don't you think this is also a factor because some people say uh, a dollar is going to go high uh, and so P um, I beg your pardon that Naira is going to crash why the dollar is going to get yeah. stronger and so it looks like that's also a speculation. Isn't this a part of the problem as well? You see, the thing is, you are giving room for speculation. You are giving room for arbitrage. Mm. That is the challenge. You know, if, as long as there is room for arbitrage, as long as there is room for a window that you buy dollar at a lower rate and go and sell at a higher rate, people will keep exploiting that option. You understand? You see, aside from, aside from watching the true rate, I also mentioned that, look, in my Facebook post last week, CBS will not beat all efforts and locations, official efforts and locations, in the last two years to make sure that that has acquired the effort, comply with the purpose with which we apply for that effort. Mm. CBS knows what, CBS knows what to do. As long as you when people know that, look, you see, Frank, I just give you an instance. When you got a million dollars at the official rate, and you are a manufacturer at the end of the year, all the like, quoted companies, reports have been coming out, nine months ago have been coming out. How many of them did you see post 50% of capital profit? No. Let's look at the effect of this, uh, you know, crisis in a moment uh, on the macroeconomic activities. Uh, look at the, uh, I mean, or the income, the take-home pay for over an average Nigerian, of course, household spending. How do you think this has, uh, you know, affected uh, this lifestyle across board? Let's look at let's look at imported products because. A manufacturer that can't source efforts at the official window will definitely go to the black market. And mm. after production, man, what price do you think that manufacturer will sell those products? Will it sell at lower than cost, cost of production? It will not. So, let me tell you, you see, I don't want to go into, oh, the federal government has said we will we, 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 we now. Um, we have local production of rice in Nigeria. Local production, have this local production been able to meet the demand? Look at the price of uh, back of rice farm. Important point. It went. It came as high as sixty-two before it started dropping. You understand? Right now, you can't get any good rice at less than forty-five naira. This is rice that was selling. I don't want to go look at the the, the good team before this one. But even as two months back. That we were crying that it was at 30 something. So, for how many graduates are earning 50,000 50, pounds? Frank? Mm. In Nigeria, how many people, aside from people that work in the bank and if you put a very you know, privileged few, how many graduates earn more than 50,000? So, what it means in a nutshell is that a graduate cannot, a one -on salary of a graduate cannot buy one pack of cards. Let's look at. Yeah. 
Uh, interesting, interesting time indeed. Um, points yeah. taken there, but let's look at uh, some other, you know, uh, development recently in the economy. We understand that the, from December twelfth, of course, we should expect to see the new naira, you know, being circulated. No, I didn't get. I didn't get. Sorry, I didn't get. I didn't get a comeback. Okay, I, I was. I was saying that uh, some say. I mean, some analysts or experts have said um, we also need to look at the other side of it, which, of course, uh, the the newly redesigned um, Naira note, which is supposed to hit the economy from December 12 as well. Is this also a factor? Because some believe that uh, the reason why we have that is that some politicians have begun to um, go after uh, dollar, um, in search of dollar, so as to be able to exchange these notes that have been stuck up somewhere in exchange for the dollar. And again, that's why the, naira, the dollar uh, is going up higher against the Naira as well. No, it's, not, it's, 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 um, it's, it's, it's a possibility, you understand? You know, for me, I've never been a party. I, 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 the last time I would talk, I told you, I don't see any reason why the CDN should go through this, this, this method of redesigning the Naira at this period. Mm. But then, well, if, if, if you are given, yes. wait, if you, if you are given a time frame for people to return the old, old Naira to the bank vaults, and you suspect that there are people stockpiling cash somewhere, and you know that maybe within this time frame, they cannot return the required cash back to the bank vaults. Mm -hmm. And they have a window to push it to uh, possibly the rural changes and the uh, small arms of them. They will take that option. And what that means is you are not having more demand and less supply of dollars. And, and definitely you know what happens when, when there is more demand than, than supply of any, any item. The price will go up. So it's not that of things. You mm. but, but, but I, what's I, your I, position? I yes, right. I, I was going to ask you your position. What your position is about this newly mm. redesigned Naira note? <laughs> I last time I would know. I see. Um, I've, I've had cases where people say, "Oh, um, CPN media to use to fight inflation. That's why they are redesigning Naira. They know they want to. Mm. That is, they want to use this method to, um, uh, you know, bring in." the excess cash in the system and I told them, see, those big shots that have Naira stockpiled in their housing, right? They don't even need to leave their house to bring that cash to the bank. They will call the account officer, the account officer will take William Van, go to the client house and pick mm. those cash. And they are the ones that will even get the new notes before you and I. Mm. But but how possibly how possible is that again? Um, how possible is that? Because we have the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, which is there to monitor as well. It is, it is. What you would see, if CPM, for me, if you are, if CPM is actually looking at fighting this thing holistically, aside from redesigning the Naira, you also. So we have they need uh, whistle blowing uh, incentives a lot. If, if you if you if you uh, sometimes when people uh, they, when when they were fighting, you know you know what you call this whistle blowing. This whistle blowing incentives. Let anybody that walks into a bank and see a huge amount of cash. You know when you want to deposit cash in the bank, you are you take your cash to the to the, the county room. And it is the country room where you see all the cash on. There must be a way to say, well, how do we ensure that the public can give information? How do you protect those that give this information? You right. have to fight this thing holistically. If okay. not, the way they are going about it, they won't achieve anything. Okay, let, let me let me quickly uh, ask you this as we wrap up now because of our time. Yes, I know uh, th it's, this is also part of um, the challenges that Nigeria is faced at the moment when it comes to economic challenges. You have high inflation, you have a debt burden, of course, which is also rising uh, more than 42 yeah. trillion are, are there, uh, stock up there to be paid. And of course, the issue of subsidy is there. But there's a pre-election year, so head into the election year. Uh, with these numbers and indicators, for individual, for an investor, and uh, maybe for uh, a businessman, what's trying to navigate this tide? What should they do? Uh, as an individual, no, no. Let me let me get your 
questions again because uh, I don't yes, want to go I, off track. Yes, I was I was asking. Of course, everyone is trying to uh, really take uh, uh, you know um, maybe take these particular issues that we are facing. The economy is facing. You have the issue of inflation there. You have food scarcity there. I mean, the food inflation has gone up as high as twenty three percent. You just told us yeah. that uh, the bag of rice is is gone through the roof as well. <laughs> you can't even yes. afford it as well. So I'm asking. Um, these are numbers. I mean, they are facts on ground. How yeah. does an individual uh, navigate this tide? And maybe for an investor who is trying to use these numbers or uh, this report to really take a stand with its portfolio, re-evaluate their investment portfolio again, how should they navigate this tide? Yeah, it, it's a difficult one, at mm. It's a difficult one, but like, let me just um, tell uh, because I've had the opportunity of talking to a few of my guys in the office here. For an individual, especially most of us, let me, let me also put the other aspect of those that are running out of the country. I told a few of my guys, see, this is an opportunity as an individual. Improve yourself. You understand? Because definitely, you see, what is important right now is as an individual is how do you survive and and make sure you you you, you know in, the, in these hard times if you have a job how right. do you retain your job okay if you have a, if you're working how do you make sure that your employer does not get to the point of possibly laying you off because it will be difficult even with your current salary you are not able to make and meet and you now lose that job so as an individual you understand I think the best thing we can do right now is improve ourselves and make sure that our current jobs will return it. Then for an investor who is possibly looking at um, investing in the Nigerian, whatever, either in Nigerian stock exchange, in Nigerian exchange or whatever, this is the time to look at stocks that we call defensive stocks. Mm. Because people must consume, people must, you understand? Right. If this is, if, if, okay. If, if, Let, if, let's start winding it down. <laughs> yes. Yes, I, I was saying give us your, um, you know, um, last thought now on the program. Yes, fine. As it stands, for investors, that's why I'm falling, that's why I'm falling, and that's why the, the, the analysis I normally give, I tell, yeah. I tell my, my, my clients, there are opportunities in this market. There are opportunities, no matter how challenging it looks like, there okay. are still opportunities. And these opportunities, when you look at the portfolio reports from the companies, they are stock companies that are doing very well. Zero in on stocks that you know will pay you good dividend. Even if the, even if the dividend yield is not going to be as high as the inflation rate, but then maintain, make sure you maintain what you have and don't lose it. And for okay. individuals, for us, Frank, let's keep pushing ourselves. Human capital development, wherever yeah. you are. Well, a good place to. Improve your skills. Yes. Thank you so much. A good place to to leave the conversation. Thank you so much, uh, Steve uh, Okafor, it's the MD, Governor Securities and Investment. Thank you for your time on the program. All right. Still to come after the break, we'll focus on activities in the Lagos State and see how drivers are beginning to negotiate their way through of course with these seven day uh, strike that has been ongoing what is the impact of this development on businesses and activities in lagos well that's the big question that we'll have to you know uh, interrogate when we come back from this break please stay with us <laughs> 